The Truth and Reconciliation Commission is a commission that was created by the settlement agreement that resolved all of the claims that were made by survivors against the churches and against the government of Canada. Now in those claims that were made, allegations of abuse that occurred in the schools were raised, but also allegations relating to loss of culture, loss of language, emotional deprivation, loss of love, loss of family, were also part of the claim. So we're pretty sure that it's safe to say that almost half of all children who went to a residential school suffered a serious physical injury of some kind. Many survivors who speak to us still feel that anger, that very intense anger about how they were treated and abused in those schools. What those schools taught you was that your language was bad, that your culture was bad, that your people were inferior, that you had no relevant or valid history, and that you should feel lucky that the churches were there, the schools were there, and that white people came to this country and saved you from a life of impoverished existence. And so those of you who are interested in the residential school story need to understand something that is very important, that it isn't just about residential schools. They took our children away from us and placed them in the schools so that they could indoctrinate them into a different way of thinking. They took the children away from their villages and placed them in institutions which were anything but a village. But then they proceeded to, to go out and try to destroy the villages. So they undermined our leadership. They took away the power of chiefs. They took away the power of women. They took away the power of our culture. They prohibited ceremonies. They prohibited gatherings. They prohibited all of the things that societies need to hold itself together. And as many survivors have observed, they took away our power. They took away our power to be who we were meant to be. So they took the children away from the villages and then they destroyed the villages so that when the children did go back to their communities, there was very little there that they could turn to to give them back what it was that they had lost in the schools. And you're going to hear about that. But you're going to hear about it at a very personal level because one of the things that we know as commissioners is that the stories of the survivors are still a story about discovery. They are still looking for why this happened and what happened to them. Many of them still struggling to find out. And their children, their grandchildren, still are looking for the answer to that question. Why are we the way we are? What happened to us? And the answers to those questions still remain elusive. But more and more we're discovering through the stories of survivors why things happened and what happened. And when we know what happened, then we can do something about it. Then we can look for those answers and find those answers in the right way. Reconciliation overall, from the Commission's perspective, means that we also have to convince Canadian society that this is their story as well. Because while the children in residential schools were being taught that they were heathens, that they were savages, that they were irrelevant, that their history didn't matter, that their languages were not worth keeping, and that they, in fact, were inferior people, those very same messages were being taught in the public schools of this country. And so, unconsciously, white people, European children, have been raised to believe in their own sense of superiority. And so as a commission, we have said, we have to start addressing the way that we teach our children about Aboriginal people. We have to address the way that we teach our children about Canadian history so that they can grow up understanding that things are not as rosy as some schools have been teaching. We have to teach them properly about the invalidity of the doctrine of discovery. Reconciliation is about establishing a respectful relationship between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people. And that's what we're working towards. And we're seeing it here 
with the gestures of all of the political leaders in this area that we've heard about today, because that show of respect between the leaders of these communities will cause people in these communities to sit up and take notice and to understand that they also must show respect to each other. And it's not just white people who have to show respect to Aboriginal people. Aboriginal people in turn have to show respect to the white people. And I hope you don't mind that I use those terms, but it's just for ease of reference. But we have to learn how to do that and mean it. And not do it because we're told to do it, and not do it because we have to do it, but do it because we feel it and we believe it. And that's key. And that's why we say at the Commission that leadership is very important. Our national leaders at all political levels have to be speaking out on this in order to lead Canadian society in the proper way. And part of that leadership is to change the way we do things in our educational system. And that's going to lead, we think, to a new relationship between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people. So reconciliation is not going to come easily. It took us 150 years of these schools to create this damage. You know, my grandfather was a carpenter and he used to tell me, it's a lot easier to knock something down than it is to build it. And they spent 150 years knocking things down. So it may take us that long to build this back up again. But we have to build it up because as you heard here from other speakers, we're all here now and nobody's going away. So we have to learn to get along. We have to learn how to get along and we have to learn to get along respectfully.